All right, MMA fools, we are back. Uh, we missed last week. I don't even really remember why. It was like snow. Yeah, it was snow. pretty bad. It was, like it was bad out. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think we maybe could have got got it done, but it also wasn't worth the risk. And who doesn't like to be lazy on a snow day? Yeah, well, everybody. I mean, yeah. you just think about like it's snowing out. That gives you an out for anything you do that day. Right. Just like right. Right, I'm like, oh, I gotta walk the dog, it's <laughs> <Yeah>. snowing. <laughs> Plus, like, it wasn't like, I mean, some <clears throat> weeks are more urgent than others in MMA weeks, so. Yeah, that week All we were gonna do was preview a card. Yeah. We would've probably spent the time driving in the snow for, like, a 20-minute podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It depends what tangents we get on to, actually, so. Oh, well, yeah, yeah cause sometimes when us. we start going. <laughs> yeah. You never know, never know. I could get real sexist in here. Yeah, pretty yeah. fast too. Mm-hmm. Half, <laughs> half of last week's podcast would have been sexist remarks <laughs> on my behalf. Well, this one probably is going to be too because there were two female fights. No, I have restraining orders out there now that I have to look good <laughs> in front of the court. The court so I can't go to court. Yeah. Oh, those those women fights were on the prelims, right? There was women fights this week. <laughs> oh my yeah. god! I saw one actually, and it was pretty. It was a decent fight. So I actually only saw two of the prelims because I, I watched them today, and I went back. First, I watched the two finishes, which were both guys' fights, and then I f- fell asleep, as you saw. Right. He walked in. I was, like, he knocked out. <laughs> I, well, I set, I set the alarm, but I set it for p.m., not a.m. Oh, my yeah. God. I do that for work all the time. <clears throat> I set it for a.m. and not p.m., and I'm like, fuck. It's literally the only barrier, like, the sleeping in or waking up, and it's like, we can't, people can't get it right. <laughs> right. Like, I need this, I need oh. this to wake me up. Yeah, it happens to right. me I more than it. I'd like to admit. Oh, same. Yeah. Or Brandon, I sleep through my alarm. Brandon was like, you're just getting up? And I was like, well, I mean, I got up the first time at six. <laughs> like, I, I, I was up. There. I just went, and I was going to take, like, a 45-minute nap. It didn't work out that way. <laughs> my, uh, my alarm clock has, like, the di- uh, differentiate between AM and PM. It's like a dot. It's just a dot that right. is all, Yeah. Like, dude, this is the m- most primitive way to tell me what this I don't know what the dot means even. Yeah. Like it's this is this five is five years. I don't know if it's PM or AM. It's like dot. this is the most important part of me <laughs> setting the alarm and you're making it this tiny little thing. Can we yeah. just make it like a bigger p- part of <laughs> yeah. the process? Or just say AM or PM. Yeah. Why is a dot? Oh mean yeah, PM? that's yeah. weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like an old probably dollar store alarm clock from like two thousand yeah. eleven, maybe. It's kinda of weird that you still use like a regular alarm clock. <gasps> is it? Yeah, most people just use their phone. phone. Yeah, see, I have it on by my. It's like a plug in. I plug my charger into it, so it's like a base thing. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to get into it. I need to update my alarm clocks, but (laughs) it's something I many flaws about me. (laughs) One of them is your alarm clock situation. Urgent. (laughs) I only use alarm clocks when I'm in hotels. (laughs) I haven't been in hotels. You're in hotels more than a lot of people are in hotels. I love hotels. I like them too, but just I'd live in a hotel oh, if I could man. afford it. I'd live in a penthouse. I like, used to... fucking Miami. That's not a hotel. <laughs> I mean, technically, it is a hotel. Yeah, that's You're an apartment. In the hotel. That's an apartment. <laughs> but it's in a hotel. Because I have pretty much lived in hotels two different for uh, Air Force, and then also my dad's business, and it's not fun because oh. they're not all penthouses. Well, no, <laughs> but I'm I'm like I don't know when it comes to finding a hotel, like I'm very cheap, but like I I'm also very like it has to be nice. Like if I look at a picture of a hotel room and the bathroom looks scary, I'm not staying there. <laughs> yeah, well, like, bathrooms are important. That is the very first thing I look at. But I don't know. I like I don't know. Yes, like she hotels. uses this train wreck of a bathroom over here. <laughs> That's not <laughs> very trust very high standards of bathrooms. <laughs> I've seen way worse. Oh, Unfortunately, man. the bathrooms at House of Brews. <laughs> I would not suggest ever sitting on a toilet in that place. I don't even know where that is. Um. Do you, do you remember the hilltop up on the hill in mm. Fallensby? Mm-hmm. That's it's House of Brews now. Oh, okay. It's fun. I love it there. It's just I would not don't use the bathroom if you don't have to. <laughs> I feel like we're all in different phases of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I I I didn't get to live my early twenties. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not judging you. <laughs> no, I know that. Yeah, yeah, it's a, but we are kind of all like spaced out age wise and like, yeah, like you said. There's Dave who's like a few years older than me. Then I'm thirty th- about to be thirty three. Then you're. In their 20s. 25. And Kyle's my age when he's here. So. Yeah. And yeah. Kyle also leads a different life than me, so. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy part is up until recently, I was living my life fairly like hers. Yeah, you were. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. my life. Well, there's developments in Dave's life. I don't know if it's out there yet, but, you know, <laughs> no, yeah, your, your life changed a little bit. Yeah. Right? I fucking went back and was looking through my videos because, like, 
I record everything because I love having memories and I'm going through. I'm like, dude, what? I don't remember that. I don't remember that. Who the fuck is that? Like, I will say I do remember everything. Oh, I've been for having. better or for worse, right? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's not a good thing to remember everything. I remember most of the night. It's just like those little mm. things that I'm like, I don't really remember that. But yeah, I have like, I have three years worth of content in three months in my phone. That's that's a lot. I feel like the worst Go part of the life you're doing stuff like that. For me, when I used to drink a lot, well, my early 20s, it's like the times I've driven drunk home, there's yeah. only a few. But I remember like being home, like, how the fuck did I get home? Yeah. yeah. It's like the, literally the most frightening thing, like, that the worst decision you can make. And like, I've d- done it a few times. Every, I mean, really me. everybody that goes out and drinks done has done it at least one it's time. Like, 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 like in bed, you're yeah. like, how did I? Or when you wake up the next morning, you're like, oh, I'm home. Yeah. This okay. Thank God. Up. Yeah, it's not. It's no bueno. <laughs> yeah, no. no. <laughs> it's like I should. This will imprint on me. I will never do this. You know, I'll try to limit how many times. <laughs> I'll never wait. <laughs> I will try. try. Well, you never say never. Right? Well, because sometimes people are like, "Yeah, I'll take you," and then then you look, you're like, "Where are you at?" Like, "Oh, I left." <laughs> oh. But also, saving okay. at someone else's house as an adult is, is terrible. Uh, yeah, I can't it's, do it. It's the worst. It's I the, walk home. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Yeah, because it's it, it's the idea of being like waking up. Like probably sick at someone else's like couch. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah Hug over, feel like trash. I'm used to it because I'm not allowed to come home after like a certain time. Well, so like I'm so accustomed to sleeping where I'll sleep in my fucking car. Like I don't care. I got blankets. I got a pillow. Mm. <laughs> but the nice place, the nice thing about where I might be moving is that Shooters is literally right down the hill. So like if I get too trash, I can just walk up the hill and go home. You're like you're like leaning towards pseudo homeless. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> that's why I have a brother who I know the code to his door, so. Whenever you're, like, young and single, though, like, there's only a certain level of, like, failure you could even achieve in life. Like, it's just, like, you only have to care for yourself. Yeah. Right. You don't, you know, it's, a, like, it's the best thing you ever. You <laughs> have your own thing, so you have a few things. You can go wherever. You can yeah. be transient. And be okay I could live it. in a hotel if I, I could go get a fucking room and just you, live, and live in the hotel. You really want to live in a hotel. Uh, no, 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 no. But. Right Wait. now, with my options, a hotel's a lot better. I feel like it's a different <laughs> podcast to talk about Nicolette's right. situation. All right, let's get into uh, MMA. <laughs> it's get, right. getting dark here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys started it. Yeah. So, uh, let's talk about the fight card that happened last night. It was uh, UFC fight night, uh, Overeem versus Volkov. And we start with the main... Actually, we can talk briefly about the undercard, I suppose. Just uh, Did you watch them all? I watched this fight. I watched enough fights to talk about. Let's go back. And I can just make up stuff about the other fights. And no one's going to call me on it, so... Oh, yeah, Devontae Smith. Yeah, he, I, I didn't even him. realize he trains out at Factory X now. Does he? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I didn't know that. All right. Yeah, he moved to what, Colorado, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did watch this fight, the Osborne. Yeah, not a lot to watch. Osborne versus uh, Rivera. Why is he so gray? I was say, why is he gray? Well, they, it's black and white. I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> oh my Jesus. god. The, uh, but this was a vicious 27 second knockout. Yeah. Uh, Rivera th- threw a kick. It was like semi caught. Caught, yeah. And, and then straight down the straight the straight down the pipe. <laughs> Pretty pretty basic, yeah. But uh, lights out. It was a great it was a great knockout. I I don't know fights like this you can never tell, you know, because I don't know what level Rivera is at. I'm not familiar enough with his fights to know whether or not that was really impre- you know that impressive. Right. But in a vacuum, that's a, a very good knockout. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Then the next fight. This is a little bit tougher to do in this situation. I didn't watch this fight. Um. Yeah. I, actually, I did watch this fight. Uh, basically, uh, this Tamur Valiev, lucky if you will, he just held him on the ground. Hmm. Nothing, nothing too crazy sounds impressive. Sexy. Sounds sexy. Yeah. <laughs> another, uh, man, another man on the ground. Did you watch this one? I actually wanted to watch that one, and I didn't. No, I heard it was really good though. That Yusef. Molly McCann. Zero. I caught it a little bit just now, but I I know that she got out grappled by Procopio. And how about this one? I did watch this fight. Switch you were watching when I came in? Yeah, I watched this fight. This is the first fight I watched, actually. Yeah. Uh, basically, it was pretty competitive, but Edwards got out grappled on the ground as well. 
uh, Hosa did a lot of damage from the top in the last round specifically. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> her full mount for a minute, pounding on her. But Edwards looked pretty good. She, looked, I think, she took this fight on short notice. I think it was a few weeks notice. She had fought like maybe a month ago. Yeah. Uh, Abu Dhabi. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, uh, yeah, Hosa looks really strong for the weight class, and Edwards sort of looks like a. She reminds me a lot of like Rose, but like less refined, just re- less refined everywhere. Pretty good striking, pretty good jiu-jitsu, but like just not next level yet. But I think she's still fairly young in her career, so. Yeah. She has the same nickname as Antonino, Shoshenko, La Pantera. It's a cool nickname, isn't it? Yeah, but like someone already has it. <laughs> that would yeah. drive me nuts. I'd be so mad. You should fight over it. There's only there's only uh, there's only so many nicknames out there, yeah. you know. You can't you can't be like uh, Dave Dumpster Fire Hammer, you know. <laughs> you can be. Yeah, you can be. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah. <laughs> what? Look, look at his the guitar hero. The guitar hero. Why? Does he play guitar? <laughs> right. Or does he just play guitar hero? And if you, oh if you my. Have a name like that, you should come out shredding a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have to. That's your walkout. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Hulk Hogan with NWO or whatever. Oh, right, right, when through the fire the and the flames yeah. from yeah. Guitar yeah. Hero 3 playing <laughs> on the screen. Oh, walkout. man. But I, I actually did watch this fight. Uh, fight. Yeah. Uh, Devontae Smith versus Justin James. And uh, I'm, I think I'm impressed by Devontae Smith. Yeah, he has a lot of power. He lost to... Uh, he lost to uh, Comma. Mm. Yeah, Kama Worthy. That was his only loss. Oh, really? He got knocked out short notice. Yeah. And they're fight. friends, too. He, um, but he, he actually, he looked, uh, he looked Strong. impressive, man. He had, yeah. uh, he had good movement, uh, powerful. That takedown he had was actually pretty impressive, it too. A, it was like a, yeah, it was like a switch. It was sort of like a switch lateral, lateral drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were like in a, I think, an over under position, and he like went backwards with his momentum and dropped him with a lateral drop. It was really nice. Landed in side control, I believe. Yeah. It's yeah. nice to see these guys from Pittsburgh like fucking starting to show out. Like, it's, well, it's they're city. getting put on the map. It should, it, there should be a lot more fighters, you know. But it wasn't at one point. There was right. nobody out of Pittsburgh. Yeah. But Justin James didn't look that <clears> good. Is it me or like, he looks the most physically underwhelming fighter I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, we, this this did end up being at a catch weight too. Sure so. Who's, like what, who pushed for that? Because usually in my head, someone could make weight on short notice or something like that. But I don't yeah, know who it was? But Smith looked really big. He looked huge. Yeah, even at one sixty. Yeah, he uh, looked well, massive, especially at one sixty, obviously. But he looked like a weight class bigger than Justin James. I don't know. Yeah, and he did end up winning by uh, TKO, basically because. His eye, his eye. Like oh, it actually was... looks like it was already messed up in this picture. I thought his, <laughs> yeah. I thought that was his <laughs> fucking eyeball. Like when you sent that picture, first of all, um, I was eating, and I opened my phone and I was like, oh, is that his eye? Did his eye like fall all the way down into his fucking cheek? Because that's what it looked like. <laughs> yeah, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't look great. Uh, I, it. It was basically closed from the bottom, which yeah. you just don't see very oh, often. Oh, it was so gross. It's like the, the worst. They call those like mouse, and it was like the worst mouse ever. Yeah, and I couldn't imagine you having that on my face. Like you think about like yeah. how that would physically feel against your eye, like just your eye area. Just pushing. Yeah. And he was like mad about the stoppage. Like, did you can't Bro. see out of that eye? Dude, it popped. Oh god, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he was gonna explode. Say your eye. Oh, because like god. he wasn't. About, it wasn't like it was like that, and he was winning the fight. No, he was getting no, battered right. on the ground. Yeah. So. And it, it looked, it literally looked like it would pop. Yeah. It really did. Uh. But yeah, it was a pretty good showing by Smith. Nice comeback fight. I think he was off with a uh, injury for a while mm-hmm. since the the worthy fight. But uh, he looked pretty good. And James looks like he's pretty tough. He has a knockout against. Uh, he has a knockout against fucking uh, little Robbie Lawler. That guy who looks like Robbie Lawler. Mm. You know, I forget his name. But anyways, he knocked him out like the uh, short notice fight. So it looks like he has some power. He looks very small, but like he couldn't get in on on uh, Smith. He couldn't get in on the range. Yeah. And they, you know, he looks like a gritty, gritty sort of guy. He's going to stick around. And- yeah. Mm-hmm. And he definitely looked like he had power. He just couldn't, he, he couldn't implement any kind of game plan. No. And then, uh, then we get to the main card and Mike Rodriguez versus Danilo Marcus. Um, honestly, uh, I couldn't figure out at the time when I was watching it, slow Mike. That's just a terrible name. Um, if it was heavyweight or light heavyweight, but it is light heavyweight. Uh, and Marcus has decent ground skill. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? Rear naked? Oh. Was it rear naked? Yeah. He ended up a uh, second round. Put him to sleep. Rear naked. Yeah. Joke. Yeah. Literally put him to sleep. Pretty quick too. Yeah. He was like out. it was like he was fighting it, and then he was just. And then it's like when they called it, he was like back, 
Yeah. It looked like he was like starting to get like up on his knees. His name should be his name should be Danimal. Like the yogurt but also animal and this, <laughs> I'm just saying. If so anyone's listening out there That should be him. that should be a new thing we do every time we go just through a fight. Just name. make up a nickname based on like whatever. Well, he's like the most creative fighter like tattoos. <laughs> it's like cross. Some lettering. Spartan, Spartan. head. Yeah. <laughs> Words on ribs. <laughs> Words on ribs. <laughs> Tribal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tribal. Yeah, tribal. <laughs> neck tattoo. Uh, Side neck. Then the bed wall for the left, his right arm, which I can't see really. But it's an uh, arrow, arrow. One of those candy skulls. <laughs> he's, he's got a wide variety going on here. Um, <laughs> but he did, he did. He looked impressive on the ground. I think it was Seeing his up, second one really in the UFC. Yeah. He looks very stiff. And I think he's old. Like I don't think he's very old, but I think he's like 36. Yeah. So, like, I was more impressed when I thought he was a heavyweight. He looks pretty big too. Yeah, but uh, I feel like whenever you're like 36 and I see you and like you're you're good at like one thing, it's hard to get excited because I'm like, dude, if he can't get that takedown, he's just gonna be blasted by somebody who yeah. is yeah. better at blast and, and distance and in and, and close range. So it's it's like you you hold your reservations for you know hype. There's no hype for me. He looked pretty good though. Yeah, on the ground. <clears throat> yeah, he had good ground game. That that was really it. When I when again when I thought he was a heavyweight, I was like, okay, well. Not a lot of heavyweights are that good on the ground, so there's you know. like not that many anymore. Yeah, they, there's a uh, Juan Esposito who won the Ultimate Fighter. Oh yeah, yeah. He's like forty, but he's really good on the ground. But there's not that many heavyweight grapplers anymore that are like jujitsu based. Yeah, mm-hmm. what's that one dude, Olenek or something like that? Yeah, Alexi he's like Olenek. forty-three. And he has like ninety fights. So yeah, how long is he really going to be competing? You know? Yeah. Uh, then the next fight was one I was excited for because I love uh, Darius. Um, I forget how they say this dude's name, but Diego Freira is what we're going to go with uh, against Benel Darius. Uh, Darius, I was hoping for more in this fight, but man, he, he won by a decision. Uh, he just puts the pressure on, yeah. man. Yeah. He just nonstop. He just held him. He, uh, Diego Freira like, could not get up in the first round. Like He was not letting him up at all. Yeah. And I feel like he like this fight was pretty evenly matched skill wise, mm-hmm. and like it, it's like I expected more out of Darius, but also I knew that Diego, he he's he's a good fighter as well. So yeah. just like I mentioned earlier about the level of competition, this is a high level competition here. Yeah, even if they're generally unknown, but you know, even but, though they're thirteen and ten, yeah, I mean it's very they could high be level. Fi- top five if they had that chance to prove it. Yeah. So like I, it was impressive what he did because he's only ever lost to. Uh, Darius and you got knocked out by Dustin Poirier and, mm-hmm. and Dustin Poirier's lightweight debut. Yeah. So I mean that's not bad losses there. That's no, two not people at in all. The Plus I'm, he subbed Anthony Pettis his last time. I, that's what I was just getting ready to say. Um. Oh, don't remember. <laughs> the uh, but Darius, I was hoping you know he tends to get in these little brawls and then gets a like a awesome knockout. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But this one, uh, Fiera was kind of picking him apart. So he had to get him to the ground. Uh, but he just, it, it's so crazy because he just keeps moving forward no matter what. Yeah, yeah. he has a good chin, and like that's going to catch up to him eventually. Yeah. It just, it, like he's been knocked out before by Barboza. Yeah. But he's still like, he well, he dropped uh, Diego with, in the first round with a body shot, a body knee, I believe. Mm-hmm, that knee. Yeah. And crumbled him, sort of. And I don't know why he didn't start working the body, you know. Start capitalizing on the body. But he started yeah. headhunting on the ground and tried to pound this, you know, on top. On top Headshots, yeah. but like his body was hurt. So I'm sure that's one of those things that you'll go back and watch it and be like, "Oh shit, I missed that opportunity." Yeah. It was a good win, though. I feel like it was pretty. It wasn't complete. It wasn't like it's completely dominant. It was competitive, but he easily won the fight. It was a split. Well, it was a decision, but someone gave the fight to. Uh, Which is crazy. Yeah, Diego. Yeah. yeah. I thought the first two rounds were clearly, you know. Um, yeah. Scroll down a little so I can see the rest of those. I want to see the rest of the stats there. I was actually surprised that the striking was almost dead even. Yeah, that five takedowns, okay. Yeah, yeah that, that'll, that'll do it. That'll, that'll do it. Even. Yeah, yeah. The strike is that even. You get five takedowns. That's they call that they call that a day. I'm um, surprised that this was the order of the card too. Like I thought, the this fight would be above the, this Pantoja and Cape fight. Yeah. So then we go to Pantoja and Cape and. This is a disappointing fight. Uh, yeah, it was. It wasn't great, but we were disappointed by Pantoja last time too, weren't we? I think that you were shitting on a striking. Remember, you said you were like, you yeah, the worst striker I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I don't remember if that if it was him or not, but I'm sure. Um, the cannibal. 
I don't know what, but then Starboy. Um, the weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they, uh, yeah, it was an underwhelming fight. Um, I mean, Cape did. Uh, I think it's pronounced Cop, but uh, he didn't do enough. No, he didn't do enough every round, and he thought he was doing enough to win the rounds. And that level, like that sort of delusional approach to the fight, is always annoying whenever they think they won a fight. Yeah, and they didn't do shit in the fight. Yeah, and they didn't do shit, and like, why, why wasn't his coaches like on his ass? In between rounds, like he didn't barely through. He was waiting the whole time. Like, yeah, laying good counters, but it is kind of crazy because I mean he's unranked. He was fighting number five. Well, he came over as a rising champion. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he yeah. was a rising. He was the he was like the the Michael Chandler of that uh that that title fight between uh, Moreno and uh, Fig. He was like the backup. Okay. When this fight fell out. That's right. And he didn't um he didn't impress like Chandler. Right, he didn't. But also too, this wasn't a bad loss. This was more of a strategic loss, I believe. It wasn't like he got blown out of the water. Right. He could he could have won this fight. That's why it's probably more disappointing that he could have won this fight. He just didn't do enough to win the fight. But it doesn't mean he's like uh, gonna fail completely in the UFC. Right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm I'll, I'm interested to see him fight again. But yeah, it was it was an underwhelming fight. Uh, uh, Pantoja won by decision. He basically threw more volume. Yeah, is it kicked more and you know. Sort of touched him more, even though it wasn't as clean. Yeah. But sometimes that's, that's a better a better fight than waiting for the best shot to knock somebody out. Right. Just waiting right. the whole time. All right. Then we have uh, Michael Johnson versus Clay. The you might as well call him immortal Guida. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and Guida did win by decision, and he actually looked better to me than he had in a while. Might mm-hmm. be because of who he was fighting. Yeah. But uh, he looked good. Uh, I mean for. Being and in the he, game he, as he long as yeah, he has, he, he, uh, he knew, like his head movement was pretty good for where he knew Johnson would be striking from. Mm-hmm. He yeah. did a lot of avoiding the shots and coming up and throwing overhands. Yeah, faking that uh, level change. Yeah, so. he was landing some big shots. He, uh, yeah, he was. The first round was super, super entertaining. Really. Yeah, it was. It was a pretty good fight. This was, to me, I feel like this was a gimme fight for Johnson. Like, right. Like, it was. Supposed to be a like, let's get you back into the mix here. Yeah, you're like you. At one point, you were fighting the top contenders, and now you're ranked like forty. Let's try to give yeah. you a fight. He's yeah. probably the second best Khabib win. To be honest, mm-hmm. Khabib only has one good win. So, <laughs> like, he's not just shit on Khabib. He's retired. <laughs> uh, but no, but this, I mean, like it's <clears throat> weird because like for a while, a Michael Johnson win was pretty good in the division. It's like you know, whenever Khabib did beat him, that yeah. didn't mean he needed to step up. Now he's like so far, his career's so off. Trajectory. Yeah. Well, that's what we were doing this one time, and I was like, "Oh shit, Michael Johnson's on this card." And then we looked it up, and he was like ranked number forty. I was like, "What happened?" He's like twenty and seventeen. <coughs> yeah, it's crazy. His record's abysmal. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's wild. It's like regional, like fucking it's, journeyman. You yeah, know? <laughs> it's time. For, it's time for him to maybe go somewhere else. Well, I feel like, like, like I said, bare knuckle boxing. His hands are really good. He maybe would fuck somebody up in bare knuckle boxing because his grappling isn't great, his cardio oh, yeah. isn't that good, and his composure isn't that good mixing it all together. But right. he might do well somewhere else like that. I thought this might have been Clay Guida's retirement fight, and then all of a sudden they announced that he had just signed a new four fight contract. <laughs> I was like, what? What? Like this dude? I mean, but you know, we make fun of like Diego Sanchez. But I would rather watch Clay Guida fight than Diego Sanchez. Yeah, this should rematch actually. Yeah, we'll get into that later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I feel like balding Guida is is a future future contender. His, he's balding and he's ready he's ready to go. He's, he's like he's like you know what I'm really gonna start training finally. <laughs> yeah, my hair can't do it all. My nice hair that I've had for 15 years. How old is he? 39, I think. 39. Yeah. Yeah. But like he does, he has some damage on him. Like it's not like he's not young. He's right. Been knocked out a few times. But he fights pretty – like, his style carries well into the older age. Yeah. You know, that gr- grinding style and that power, powerful wrestling style can get you out of bad situations pretty pretty well if you can – Well, and I remember when he first started, they basically said, like, he never actually trained. He did, I, Like, he lived in a trailer with his dog, and then when they called him to fight, he was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> right. My um, one manager's <clears throat> brother knows him really well. Like, they go fishing and stuff all together out oh, in really? California. Yeah. I would love to go fishing with Clay Guida. I wouldn't yeah. even know, like, what to say to him. <laughs> I just listen. I just let him talk. 
<laughs> just remember, like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't let anybody talk. You're gonna listen to me. Yeah. I'll tell you about your what you need to do in your fighting career. <laughs> Get fucking knocked off. Remember when you boat. got knocked out by Brian Ortega? Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's what you did wrong. Yeah, it's like seven years later. <laughs> <laughs> he has like fucking <coughs> twenty fights <coughs> since then. That's hilarious. But All yeah. right. Uh, but yeah, he looked all right. Uh, Johnson looked bad. Though, <clears throat> Johnson looked it was, bad. It was a little bit. It was both, mm-hmm. but also not to understate. <clears throat> I think we did looking pretty good. Yeah. Never. Can't clear my throat. All right. Uh, so then we got uh, Corey Sandenhagen versus Frankie Edgar. Corey Sandenhagen did win by a <laughs> kick clean Vicious. flying knee KO uh, and at the twenty eight second mark. And it wasn't even like Frankie was going in for like. I take that. I mean, it, that's pro- that's definitely where the height difference comes into play. But like, matter, he was yeah. just standing there. Yeah, and went to go like <clears throat> throw a punch or something. And next thing you know, he was just like. Dum. When you watch when you watch the replay, he actually was starting to go in for a take. Okay, I was like, like driving. Better, like, he was di- ducking down for like an overhand. Yeah, the catch sort of like a Chandler how he got Hooker. That sort of like scenario where he's ducking down like Same that. Same setup. Yeah, but it definitely looked like Corey knew exactly what the guy was doing, mm-hmm. and man. He fell like a like a timber like Bad. timber. <laughs> this is actually what Hooker was. He did to Chandler. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's what right it's kind of what we expected to for, uh, yeah. Hooker to do to Chandler. Maybe not you. That's what, that's what you I mean, no. <clears throat> don't get me wrong. I expected that to be his game plan. Yeah. yeah. I just didn't think it would. He'd execute. I didn't think he would poorly execute. I was no thinking, game plan at all. But I was just thinking about wow. Look at this. <laughs> That's, but that's what I'm saying. When you said, like, when you said, uh, uh, Frankie, he, he, it's time for him to go. I'm like, well, I mean, he just he got caught with a crazy flying knee. Yeah. But it doesn't get be- like your ability to take punishment at 40 after getting knocked out like that at 40 does not yeah. lend well, itself to the future really as much. It and depends on what matchups, obviously. And two, though, like, Frankie ha- has been in the game for how long? And well, has only had been knocked out else. twice. Yeah. yeah. Once by Brian, which was only two years ago. Three. But something. I'm so bad with time. So. Then. This is like a worse. Oh, yeah. that was bad. And then this. So it's like, what do you know? What I mean, how can you look at that? You, you're someone that has never been knocked out for all the years you've been in the UFC, and it's like now, you're kind of like starting right. to go to sleep when you get hit. So. I'm just, yeah. Well, I mean. Who's not going to sleep? Well, no, on that, yeah. Me. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's a, a good very, point. Fight. Like, you just got to think of, like, think about Edgar's career. I remember watching him with, like, Gray Maynard, like, 10 years ago. And, like, you just think about the level of, like, training, how different it is now for these young guys coming up. Yeah. Like, Hagen was, like, fucking 18 years old. Now he's in his prime, maturing in his body, and Edgar's just on the downswing. And it's just, like, these guys are a lot better. They're just a lot better. It seems like yeah. they're a lot better than they were, like, <clears throat> the Maynard versus Edgar era. Of lightweights, yeah. These guys are more athletic. They're more sharp. They're good everywhere. And it's like, it seems unfair to put somebody, and you don't know how well somebody can keep up. Some fighters can keep up with the, that training and that that new techniques. But, but honestly, it was unfair for Frankie to be fighting those lightweights in the first place. Like he was only fighting at lightweight because right. the other weight classes didn't exist. Yeah, and then well, yeah. when they were implemented, he didn't want to go. He didn't want to go down to one thirty five. I was reading. He was like, I don't want to look like like a pussy, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> like. But, well, but, but it, he's still way smaller than Tin Hagen. Right. It's like, how? what divisions do you need to go to to be bigger than somebody? Bantamweight. This is Bantamweight. I mean, uh, flyweight. flyweight, yeah. Even Women's then. Flyweight. Women's flyweight. <laughs> Shut up. Lady bugs with uh, fucking... Uh, <clears throat> could you imagine if there was a male strawweight? <laughs> That's like 101 pound wrestling when like you're in high school. It's like how it's like middle school. Though. How are you? <laughs> yeah, like, no, li- I'm a kid that I went to high school with wrestled at 103 his entire career. Toddlers? Toddlers? High school. Yeah. And <clears throat> Tyler uh, was pretty small. <laughs> but yeah, it was a I mean, it was a vicious knockout. Uh, I don't know what Frankie does from here. I will agree that I don't really see Frankie going for the belt. Like no, he had no. to put on an impressive performance here. And it, uh, again, Corey Sandin, hey, he's just the truth, man. Yeah, that guy's a—he's a beast. And like his—he's gotten better. It seems like a lot more vicious. Yeah, with his striking. And uh, I feel like it's weird because like Yon's a champion, but I feel like there's people in the division that have better wins than Yon does. Yeah, it's, it's like Yon's fought Aldo, and that's a good win. You know, that's a good. Right. But, like I don't know. I just feel like people are like, he what's his top wins? Fucking yeah, Uriah Faber and Aldo. 
Yeah. Mike Brown next? Who's he going to fight? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> fight every old WEC right. champion ever. I mean, yeah. we're about to find out. Uh, we're about to find out he's going to fight Aljamain Sterling. Yeah, so. I'm excited because it's finally like Bantamweight's been so stagnant at the top for a while. I mean, all these like younger or um, lower ranked guys are like fighting and starting to like move up in the rankings. Yeah. But it's just like I cannot wait to st- I cannot wait for that fight. It, and I feel like uh, San Higgins has a better shot against Al- Aljo the second time. The way he lost the first time was it wasn't fluky because it happened to him and like you know obviously legitimate win, but. Do I see him getting subbed in, <coughs> in a minute? No. Right. You know, is there ways to avoid that pretty easily? If if your mind, it was kind of crazy. Yeah, like it just it, it wasn't like I said, it's not fluky, but you could learn from that more than you could like in blast it out. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. For five rounds or something, three rounds or whatever it's gonna be. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll move on and we'll go to Alistair Overeem versus Alexander Volkov. And uh, I was actually excited for this. I was excited for the Frankie Edgar fight. Then I was excited for uh, Alistar Overeem, and Alistar Overeem honestly did not look good. No, at all. He looked shot. Yeah, he looked very shot. Yeah, he looked like I'm just going to turtle up. I'm going to throw a looping hook every now and then. I'm going to semi grapple you, but then just back off. Because like, I can't get it going. Yeah. Like what? What? What was your game plan, man? He was looking for the one big shot the whole time, and Volkov actually looked pretty good. He looked really. He good. He looked really fucking good. He destroyed good. Alistair over him. Like his yeah. striking looked I extremely should, should say, good in the second round. Uh, Alexander Volkov won by KO TK. It was really a TKO, um, and it was actually it looked bad. The the punch that finally dropped him. It was like he wasn't gonna fall. Then he was like, "Hold on, I gotta fucking get on the ground." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then it completely it turned stoppage. his back. It was definitely a good stoppage. I uh, and his and Alistar's face was like shattered. Yeah, like there was just blood everywhere. I know from like the middle of his face. It wasn't like a, around his eyes like you normally see or anything. Yeah, it, was it was like mostly, just everything around here was. His nose go- was probably. Destroyed. Yeah, fucking gushing or watch something. Him, watch him like beat another four people just ran like. Just I know. Coming back, he's just resilient, but. It, it does, he he doesn't he's not dynamic or athletic enough now and like he's slower yeah so like he doesn't have the power really he doesn't have a he has a good wrestling game with people who can exploit it against but like whenever I seen pictures of Volkov that you sent the other day oh my god bigger, he's put on some muscle and that served his game pretty well he's, he's yeah. more powerful yeah he's maybe better at soft and takedowns than he was you know but you imagine he would be I mean his legs are huge I was when I was watching the fight I was like I think his legs are the same size as my waist he made. Overeem looked like a different weight class. Yeah, like, yeah, he was Overeem massive. Was a big dude, but... Yeah, he Overeem weighs two fifty five. This guy came in at two sixty four, and he but, just looked, looked way bigger than Overeem. And I feel like Volkov, though. I mean, he was smart, patient. He had a great jab. He fought behind his jab pretty well. Mm-hmm. He yeah. was like a power jab. He was stepping into it and just sh- fucking him up every time he touched him with it. Yeah, it's just so crazy too. Like Alistair Overeem forever was known as like the best striker at heavyweight, and you were watching last night, and you're like, how were you ever known as that? Yeah, you're just you're just turtling up. That's all you're doing. The game has evolved so much, and I've never seen the I've never seen a fighter be so aware of his deficiencies. Like it seemed like the last handful of fights, he knows his chin's bad. Like, yeah, and he fights like that's he why he's just bad. covering up like yeah. that. And yeah. like it's, it's it's actually it's cool to see because it's like, well, my chin sucks. Yeah, I have to fight like this now. I can't just get into fucking striking battles with everybody. I right. have to be a wrestler. I have to clinch more. I have to be selective. You but know? you can't win fights the way he was fighting. Like, I mean, he's but he's won. Like this fight, it was different because I think the level of opti- uh, opposition was different than Augustus Sakai. Yeah, right. Volkov is a better heavyweight than him. So he's been around enough too to not let Overeem exploit anything on his game. Yeah. So like he's winning against other people, but like you know Volkov just knew what the fuck he needed to do to keep a fight in his realm. Right. Well, you, he, I feel like Alistar had to use some of his old striking techniques to to do anything. Like, you can't just turtle up and expect to get a takedown. Yeah. You can't just turtle up and expect to land one crazy right hook. Yeah. It, it, well, I've seen glimpses of this style. Like, think about when he fought JDS. Yeah. That was literally just, like, waiting around the outside, stepping in with a big punch, catching him. Mm. But he just has less athleticism and less quickness to do mm-hmm. that style now, yeah, and, and like his power has faded a little bit. He's not, he doesn't look as in shape. So like he's trying to maintain the style that is built off of his athleticism three years ago, four years ago. And it's hard to do that when you get to be forty years old with that wear and tear in your body. So I feel like it's like he just can't fight. And like his Ubrim style when he was like muscular came to the UFC was built on a level of confidence he doesn't have anymore. Yeah, yeah. this was like 
I'm, I'm a destroyer and I'm fucking. I'm the demolition he, man. Yeah, and like yeah. Just, he's not that fighter anymore. Yeah. It's kind of sad, and I wish they just let him juice. Like, yeah. <laughs> seriously, let's just let him juice. juice up. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The amount of fights he's had is what like that's it's something about the, these dudes from the Netherlands because oh, Moose. Right. You can, we know, we know, we heard it. No, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm talking about yeah, like they, they fight, it, fight longevity. <clears throat> like he's got damn near sixty fights. Probably I don't plus K one. You know, and then one, Moose one. has damn near sixty fights. So like. But honestly, what's crazy is Volkov. I didn't realize it has a fuck ton of fights. He's like thirty three and something. Yeah, he's in forty fights too. Yeah. Yeah. He's fairly Damn. young. He's like what thirty two, maybe thirty three. Yeah. He's pretty young for a heavyweight. But yeah, his record is like thirty three and something. Like Jesus Christ. I think he lost to Minikov and Bellator, and I think he lost to Czech Congo. Oh and Bellator yeah. Bellator too. I think I was wrestled by Czech Congo back in the day. But like, he's only lost to Derek Lewis in a fluke. Last ten seconds of the fight, yeah, that was crazy. Out, and then he got out wrestled by Curtis Blades, so it's not like his his record's not terrible. I don't think. No, but, um, I, I, but I feel like he looked. Pretty, like, <clears throat> remember the Blades fight? He looked better than Blades at the end of the fight. Blades won, but he was gas as shit. Yeah, the were coming to him. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm excited to see Volkov keep fighting because I think he presents problems to anybody. Yeah, he's just he's so big. He's six foot seven, two hundred and sixty four pounds, and he's a good striker. And he has tree trunks for legs. And, and I was telling you earlier before the podcast that I think he's a bad stylistic matchup for Stipe. If Steep if he gets to Stipe, he's yeah, a baseball champion. Stipe doesn't have the wrestling that Blades does. He's more of a generalist. He's mm-hmm. good, pretty decent at everything. He puts it together well. But I don't think he could wrestle Volkov consistently, you know, the, the sort of grind him out like he did to Francis. And Volkov is probably a better striker, a cleaner striker than Stipe is. Yeah. He just has more t- fundamentals, you know? Right. Um, all right, let's look at some matchups. I'm not going to do everybody on the card. I'm uh, really going to do Darius yeah. and then do the two main guys um, or the two main fights. Uh, Darius, I kind of like anywhere between Paul Felder and Rafael okay. Dos Anjos. I feel like maybe, I don't know, I'd kind of like to see him versus Dan Hooker with Hooker coming off a loss. Yeah, Dan Hooker's right in the middle of what I was talking about, yeah. yeah. It depends on what they do with Hooker because Hooker could, I was wanting Hooker to fight Tony Ferguson. Yeah, that that could be cool I, too. I feel, I, you know, but I feel like uh, Felder, Kevin Lee, or not <clears> Kevin <throat> Lee, I don't know, I think he's above Kevin Lee now, but uh it's weird because all these top dudes now. <laughs> They're all locked up with each other, you feel like. Yeah, Khabib needs to be off there. I don't think he's fighting again, to be honest. Yeah, if he does, it seems like it might be GSP. GSP but I don't even yeah. think that's going to yeah, happen. I think well, Felder is a good fight for him if, if Felder wants it and mm-hmm. if he wants to fight again, which I think that Felder does. Um, yeah, he said he does. Yeah. yeah. So, so I feel like maybe <clears throat> makes sense. But uh, if they did the Dan Hooker as well, I'd be okay with it. Depends what Ferguson's doing. I feel like they need to match Ferguson up with somebody soon. And yeah. And we'll see what's going on with that. Tony's been chirping a lot lately. Yeah. He's always chirping, but he's he's coming at Michael Chandler. Uh, he was well, he was also coming at uh, Diaz. And Nate, yeah. Well, he needs to get himself back in the light. Two vicious losses. Yeah. I think he knows that, you know, he's got to be out. He's got to do something. Um. Then... Let's get to Frankie Edgar, Sandon Hagen. Bantam weight. Yes, I agree. There's no else in the division right now that's even right there. Especially yeah. Especially performances like his last two. And if Aljo wins, then there's that rematch. Yeah. yeah. I, regardless of who wins, I think that's what Sandon Hagen needs to do. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that Cody's not fighting Sandon Hagen. I'm glad that. Like, yeah. Because I think he'd fuck up Cody. No offense, Nicolette. Yeah. I, I think feel like that's a Seriously, because Cody's very small <clears throat> person, Sam Hagen. Yeah, he's he's he's, 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 he's like shorter. Inches or something like that. And actually, for Frankie, maybe Cody. Yeah. No, they're 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 teammates. They're not gonna fight. They won't fight. I don't they think better. they'll fight each other. They better fight each other. <laughs> you want to be a fucking fighter or not? Yeah. Look at Gilbert Burns and uh, Usman. <laughs> well, they the, yeah, but they're not. They haven't like uh, they had stopped training together at that point when Usman had become champion didn't they like they haven't like trained together no, I don't know they called while. them teammates the other night uh, did well, they yeah well, they, well uh, Usman, I don't think that what, teammates thing matters as much as it used to I think if you're fighting for a title that might be a different story Usman, but I think went out to uh, just, with Justin Gaethje and, and with Trevor Whitman yeah Trevor that's Whitman. what I thought yeah. and, uh, I think that uh, 
uh, Burns stayed with uh, what uh, Hooft. Yeah. Henry Hooft. So I think they did. They have. They haven't trained in a few fights together. Yeah. Respectively, but yeah. I feel like uh, it's fucking bad because like there's no easy matchups now coming forward. He already beat Munoz. If Garbrandt's on the table, then like Rob Font, dude, but Rob Font's gonna brutalize Ed- Edgar. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like it's <laughs> it'd be bad. Yeah. And I think Marlon Rias trained with uh Edgar too, at uh Gracie's gym. I think they're all like Gracie dudes. Okay. Uh, Marlon Rias and so I don't think you can fight Rias and Jose Aldo. It's like dude, Jose Aldo already beat him twice. The fight's not right. even fucking competitive anymore. Like it's like it's like every time he goes to get away from Jose yeah. Aldo, Jose Aldo is following him around. Fighting wigs at fucking woman's straw weight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my uh, oh, well. Yeah, San Hingham for sure. Title shot. Whoever wins, don't care. Edgar just has limited options now. Yeah, because it's like there's no really path to the title that isn't killers or people that like. It's like either he won't fight or already fought. Like maybe Dillashaw if the, that fight with Aldo. <clears> through, <throat> yeah, that'd be like a like all these guys are around the same time sort of fight. But like Aldo <laughs> versus Dillashaw is a lot more. A lot more uh, meat on it, you know. Yeah. Did you see that video of, of Dillashaw training? No. They they put a video up, and I mean, I it wasn't it wasn't anything like spectacular, but like he's still fucking TJ. Like he's, he's still quick. I don't know. I just. I mean, it's different to like have a training video at all, did, but fight top level competition. Oh well, right. Yeah. yeah. But it's just still like he's I'm older, surprised that older he. Older too. He's like 35 now. I mean, he took what was it two two years? Two years? And I, and like you just think about like. I don't know. For me, it's weird because like San Hagen looks like the best fighter in the division to me now. Yeah, and his last two wins were very bias. impressive. Yeah, maybe it's recency bias. You know, uh, I've seen him fight more recently than other dudes, but his di- his di- I mean, you know, he's so dynamic in his striking, and like I feel like that head kick he hit Marlon with too. Yeah, and like Just skimmed his head. I feel like Dillashaw is gonna be like a step behind, like because I feel like Dillashaw's his style's great, but like. Like I said with Edgar, keeping it updated, he predicated that style on on beating fucking Hen and Burrell. You know yeah. what I mean? How long ago was that? Yeah. The, you know, or Dominic Cruz. How long ago was that? That's how he developed into that fighter he is now. Is that fighter going to be enough to fight the guys coming up? Like Peter Yon or, you know, people that are a lot more dynamic than even Dillashaw is. So it's just like going to be interesting to see how he fits in the top of the division, you know? Yeah. Uh, so now I guess we'll go to heavyweight. <clears throat> I'm excited for bantamweight though. I love it. There's so much talent. There is, and they're all like the top ten, top fifteen, all. And totally. even further down too, though. I mean, like there's guys that are starting to grind their way up that are like, like just they're just good. They're yeah. gritty. They're real gritty. They're powerful. This is a division where if you're not fast and you're not strong, yeah. you're you're at a disadvantage immediately because everybody is so quick. Yeah, and I feel like Edgar looks slower. Like, it just, that's like aging up and going down in weight classes. Yeah. That's the most dangerous game you can play, I feel like, in MMA in terms of switching divisions because you're just not going to be able to compete with a guy who's 26. Right. Yeah. Being 39 and cutting weight and all these other things that you're adding to your, you know, fighting style. Mm hmm. You know, this is kind of crazy to think about when you're looking at heavyweight. Like, honestly. Curtis Blades versus Derek Lewis might be the number one, number one contender fight. Like, if Derek Lewis wins, he might be fighting for the belt. I uh, I'd like to see Volkov fight the winner of Rosenstruck versus Zero uh, Game. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a great fight for whoever wins. That's a great that's a great fight right there. I would really like to just see Cyril Gain versus Volkov. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Gain's gonna beat Rosenstruck. I feel like he's more more developed as a striker mm-hmm. and I feel like Rosenstruck doesn't have any grappling I feel like Gaines a better grappler than I've seen he has submission wins yeah he has three rounds of grappling fights in the UFC yeah and, and Rosenstruck should be should have lost to Overeem I feel yeah. like he lost that fight yeah like he lost all, all the fight the whole fight besides the end like then literally the last nice couple stoppage. seconds yeah then got a nice stoppage and you see how <clears throat> I mean that that Overeem hasn't been in top form and like he for, for a while he's been yeah. winning off of his experience but yeah so if you lose to Overeem like that you know in your career a few years ago it doesn't look good you know going against Stipe yeah, yeah. You know, being a contender it makes you hesitant to like be excited about his uh, upper mobility there yeah as spectacular as that one punch was you were getting your ass beat the whole and fight and out grappled and taken down by a yeah. old Overeem with 80 fights or whatever right 
Yeah. Um, but so for Volkov, I agree. I think the Rosenstrike versus Cyril Gain fight the winner of that. I think that's a good fight. And Alistair Overeem. I guess. GDS. GDS <laughs> needs to go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 He, he is the one his court case against the UFC for, for the back of the yeah. shots he has filed probably or something like that now that he's bitching about. So ridiculous. He, at least we haven't seen anything about it for a while. He, Maybe he's finally let it go. He's working on putting together another video with glasses on. <laughs> he looks, he looks studently or whatever. Looks like he's intelligently <clears throat> explaining his side. I don't know. Like it's, I don't know what else he can. Maybe the loser. He, he, Overeem trains with blades now. Yeah. So, hmm. I, but like it depends what he wants out of his career because he probably should just retire. He's not getting another title shot. Yeah. He looks like shit. Yeah, he looked it looked bad. He has the most fights that anyone I can think of. <sighs> yeah, it's forty seven and eighteen, so freaking sixty three. I I'm terrible at math. I'm surprised I got that far, honestly. 65. <laughs> oh, look at me. The, the, um, I'm so bad at math. Yeah, but like that's what I was saying, Volkov. He's thirty two and eight. That's a pretty good record. Yeah. Yeah, well it's still it's but it's also just a fuck ton of fights. Yeah. I feel like maybe if Derek Lewis loses, everyone can fight Derek Lewis because that fight was chirped out for a few years now. Yeah. This is going to be matched up. I think everyone called him out a little while back you know, for a fight. So if he loses that fight, then that would make sense for Irving, I guess, if he still wants to get another one. I mean, you got to think, he makes like $800,000 a fight. Yeah. Fucking ride that ride that out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As long as you can. Until the UFC does not want to pay anymore because yeah. that's a lot of money. You think if you fight twice a year... And that well dries up. Would I want eight hundred thousand dollar paydays to drive just because I'm getting knocked out? Right. No. No. Uh, yeah. Like you keep them coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because like you see what Orlovsky does. He makes like three hundred thousand dollars fight, and he fights cans and just, and just does barely enough to win. <laughs> right. So like, fuck but he's it. making a good living. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, it's like a journeyman sort of like. All right, this is my trade. I'm just doing this for money, and that's. Some fighters get to that point. So. Yeah, which it's, I don't know, it makes you a little like, that I money could go towards somebody who's like, you know. I am of two minds of it, because like, I don't want to see Orlowski fight anyone anymore because of the <laughs> fights. But also, if you can hose the UFC for $300,000 a fight, and you have probably have CTE the rest of your life, <laughs> you need a nest egg. <laughs> right. Then we'll, then but if you go back for the UFC, no. You know? Yeah. Right. They know, they know what they're paying for, and they pay Orlowski to fight fucking random top 15 fighters that just make their debuts or whatever. Right. So. All right, well, let's get into the future matchups here. This card's going to be hard to buy. Uh, UFC. Oh, what the hell? What are you doing here? Just change your mind. Technical difficulties. Jacob, where are you? <laughs> All right. Seen Jacob flounder this much with technology. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, UFC 258, Usman versus Burns. Um, oh, my gosh. This card's not great. Macy Barber That's and Alexa Grasso are the co-main. Are you kidding me? Yeah. They did Gasol change. Gasol versus Heinz should be higher than that. Yeah, that should be the co-main. They ended up switching this card around a little bit, too, That's though. Pedro Munez I... and Rivera isn't awful, either. Well, what fight fell out that was the co-main? I forget. Do you guys remember? Like, there was a, another co-main. Weidman. Oh, uh, Wyman Hall, Hall. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. That would I wasn't even excited. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm excited to see your Hall win. Yeah. Win. So, like, you know. And also, it's weird because, like, I don't like Wyman, but I've been watching Wyman for, like, 10 years now, so I'd rather see him fight than, like, someone like fucking Maki Patolo. You know, right. You know, it, just, you know it, it, it fucking flips a switch more in my brain of somebody, rel- you know, yeah. I know who they are. Same yeah. with Jim Miller and Bobby Green. <clears throat> Do I care about seeing this fight from 2012? That could have happened then, and I wouldn't have noticed it. You know, right? It's right. not a fresh matchup, but also, eh. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's this is a tough one to t- choke down for 70 bucks, but I'm I'm going to because I have to watch it for this. Wow. We sh- I'll watch it together and throw in together, so I don't have to pay <laughs> 70 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> pat, pat out the fucking demons. Right? Yeah, right. What's the date on this? Next week. Yeah. Oh, I'll be in Pittsburgh. I, I, I can maybe come over and throw in some bucks for this one. Um, thank you. Yeah. I might be. I don't know. I might be able to. I don't. I know that we're all. Uh, we have a big dinner. We're going out to Pittsburgh for dinner that day. So. 
Um, but yeah, so the really the main fight that you really even want to talk about here is obviously Usman versus Burns. I'm starting to really get on the uh, the Burns. Burns train here. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a really good possibility we have a new champ crowned uh, whatever date this fight is, February 13th. Yeah, he... Uh he this seems a lot more hungry, more hungry. Yeah, the drive, yeah. like the like the drive is at an all time high. It looks like, and he's he's really well rounded. Mm-hmm. Like he's got good striking. He's obviously a great jiu jitsu practitioner. Uh, and when it comes to Usman, like his cardio and his grappling to me are what make him so dominant. His striking is not elite. Mm-hmm. You know? uh, he has okay power, like I said. He's has, has yeah. a few knockouts, but not recently. Yeah. He looked, he looked bad against Masvidal. Like, not the worst he won. It was just crazy that Masvidal was able to neutralize what Usman wanted to do, yeah. especially on short notice, and yeah. for not being known as a grappler. He was able to neutralize what right. Usman wanted to do. And Usman is like, he outworks people. And he outworks people in certain positions. And I don't know, that's the only way he, I think he can win this fight is outworking Burns against the cage. Yeah. Clenching up. I mean, maybe he looks, maybe he looks fucking dominant and... You know, he looks like the best Usman ever. Yeah. And I but I feel like his win against Woodley was worse <clears> than <throat> Burns' win against Woodley for pairing recent performances and last few fights and common fighters they fought. I mean, Usman beat Maya in a decision. Burns knocked out Maya. So you just got to compare stuff like that. And I know it's not always one-to-one ratio on how that compares. Right. But, you know, you just skill set-wise, Burns is a lot more powerful. So. Honestly, I'd be willing to bet money that the second most exciting fight, or maybe even the most exciting fight on this card, ends up being Munoz versus Rivera. Like, we, we look at that, and we don't get overly excited for it, but they are two top ten guys in their weight division, and they both... <laughs> Me and Brandon just, feel away. There's just so many more exciting <laughs> fighters in that weight division that you're like, oh, all right, they, they just don't... Like, they're, like you just said, there are so many other people, like... Like, rank lower Rivera them that deserve their what's ranking. he good at has anyone found out like what Jimmy Rivera is even good at I just feel like they might end up just like brawling probably yeah. well cause that's what Munoz did with Cody once yeah. they started just going into that firefight it was I think it was Cody's decision more than anything yeah Cody's well I mean he got mad <laughs> yeah he goes I'm angry he did but he, but he reciprocated so <laughs> he had that no dad anger <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, you're the worst. What? It's a very palpable anger. I can kick, I can kick you now. I can fucking kick you right in the neck. I can kick you now. <laughs> I like how he says stuff like that and then just looks at us like, huh? I know. Yeah, huh? I do it on purpose. <laughs> I know you do. Like, one uh, oh man, one day I'm going to go through. I'm going to watch every single episode and I'm yes, going to maybe. clip every single maybe. snide and like <laughs> <laughs> under the table thing that you say and I'm just going to make a montage if, job, job, if I get a job they'll find me on YouTube being sexist <laughs> maybe racist <laughs> and making fun of immigrant names or whatever I do <laughs> 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 just, dude, you can't put, sign ask or ask or GFC and not expect people to just be like dude Come on. Come on with your yeah. double name. <laughs> he was going to play Cody's, the old Cody Stamen thing. I know. That happened. I was so confused. I was like, wait, what? So it's Asker, 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 Asker. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's a, that's driving you insane, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, because he hated Askar Askarov's name in the first place. <laughs> then just enter Askar Askar into the gonna, mix. There's gonna be a heavyweight. It's gonna be like Ask Ask. <laughs> this is, I'm just I'm gonna quit. You're, I'm gonna watch football. You're, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have you're gonna have a fucking aneurysm. <laughs> they just do a fucking duplicate name card of all the duplicate names. White people. Oh my god. You'll just god. be twitching. Just, just fucking. Oh my god. All right. Well, I've, I don't even want to look at this card um, anymore. No, wait. Actually, go back to that real I'm quick. I'm actually excited to see how Calvin Gaslam looks, to be honest. I feel like... I'm, I'm so just, over getting excited for Calvin Gaslam, though. I feel like this is an easily matchup. I feel like Heinish is like a grinder. And I don't see... I don't know. Calvin got grinded by like Neil Magny. So, like, you just think, like, fucking how good is Calvin, you know? Yeah. I feel like his best performance is probably the Izzy fight. That was his, like, yeah. pinnacle. Yeah, crowning achievement. Yeah. He seems like an underachiever. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like he just, I used to get so excited for him, and it's just like he he just lets you down. Yeah, I don't. I just he needs to go to welterweight. Yeah. And like, it, if you don't care enough about your career to make the drop to the weight class you should be fighting in, you don't want to put in the work. Yeah, that's yeah. What it seems like because it's like I mean, Dave, you got fit. 
Yeah. Fucking take him under your wing, dude. I just lost fucking 35 pounds. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> right. oh, that, yeah. Take I'm, him under your wing, Dave. <laughs> yeah, you come on. Come on, Calvin. <laughs> well, no, but we, you, you already had the epiphany that, like, there's, like, he can't go down to welterweight because he'll get grinded by the wrestlers. Well, I mean, what do you, do you want to be a little guy fighting huge dudes? Because, I mean, he lost to Chris Weidman. He got all grappled by Chris Yeah, Wyman. that's absurd. Yeah, and like that, it's now that it looks way worse because Wyman looks way worse. Oh, yeah. So maybe Wyman is better then. But yeah. I mean, what do you want to do, you know? The other fight that I'm really excited for on this card is the... Um, Can you go down a little bit? I would like to see how uh, what Vieira looks. Mm-hmm. Vieira y- y- yeah. Um, Blil Muhammad and Diego Lima. What blows my mind is the fact that Diego Lima is in the UFC and his brother is not. Diego Lima is like the worst Lima brother. He's like the bad. He's not bad, but he's of the two. Which is like, why isn't Douglas Lima in the in the UFC? He'd be a top welterweight. He he he'd be champion. Yeah, same with the Pitbull brothers. They ain't in the UFC too. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that and that the the one is like chirping hard about Michael Chandler doing well. And there, he's like, every time he does good, I look even That's better. True, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's right. Freaking Josh Thompson made a statement about like the fact that. Because it was Patricio. Yeah. I don't know the difference. I think it was Patricio. The, the fact that fight. Patricio knocked him out is what sent Chandler out of Bellator. Like, he pretty much was like, the, yeah, Bellator didn't want, like, Michael Chandler after he got knocked out by a featherweight. Yeah. yeah. It like, actually, what? It actually, it actually makes you, reminds you of, like, whenever, back in the day with wrestling, you'd have a wrestler from WCW wash out and then come over to WWE and become champion. Like, Chris Jericho, remember back in the day, he was, like, a mid-carder in WCW. Yeah. And, like, he just was, like, would never would never fight Hulk Hogan, but he yeah. came to the WWF and started main eventing. That yeah. sort of sort of remind me of how they rebranded Chandler as this. Not that he's not a top guy, right? But they whitewashed and they sugar coated his losses and made him seem like he was came. Like if you were to ask a random UFC fan, Michael Chandler was the champion of Bellator, right? Like it just the common narrative now is like he was the champion of Bellator. He's yeah, they now. just ignore the fact that he, he got lost. yeah, yeah, right. and like that, and that's smart of the UFC because. They repackaged his brand. You know? Yeah, and yeah, I mean, and he like he showed up too. Yeah, so, like if he got knocked out of a hooker, that th- those losses would have meant more. Like, oh, he lost to Bellator actually. So right, you know, of course yeah. he lo- lose hooker, but it's and such he- it's such a win win for the UFC because it's like it's like yeah, we saw the talent in him, so we signed him, and if he gets lost, like well, of course he lost. He was from Bellator. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like the Hector Lombard thing. Yeah, you know, oh, he was a big fish in the small pond over there. Yeah. And now he came over and couldn't swim with the big fishes in the UFC. Yeah. And they could always have that narrative with fighters that lose. So they could fucking frame it how they want to. Yeah. The thing, too, that looks good for Michael Chandler is that he knocked out Dan Hooker, who people couldn't, like, get out. You know what I mean? Like, right. Poirier couldn't get him out, and whoever Durable. else was Dur- chirping. Yeah, Durable uh, p- went to war with Paul Felder. Went Felder, war. that's who else he was knocked talking out, about. Knocked out of fucking Gilbert Burns, who's fighting for the Walter Ward title. Yeah. Right. So, like, you just, you know, it, it was a good win. So, like, it, his success was the UFC packaging and also him performing. Yeah. So, it was sort of like a good scenario for both of them. Now they have a new contender. He has a nice new restart in his career, put his losses in Bellator behind him against guys. He's never lost any in the UFC yet. Yeah. So right. One and zero, yeah. as far as everyone's concerned. But uh, we could probably do news. Probably a few news tidbits to get over. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have them like all put I, together. Was the big thing. Oh uh, yeah, I, I can just look at the screenshots in my pictures because <laughs> that gets uh, pretty much all of it. A fucking Sugar Son O'Malley versus Thomas Almeida. Terrible. Dude. Terrible yeah. fight for so him. He's gonna kick his leg to this shit. Is like MVP sort of. Ma- no, no, it's fucking. It reminds me of like MVP versus some can that they try to get him back on the hype train. Yeah, Almeida hasn't won since 2016. Yeah, that's. Yeah. He's tailor made to be knocked out by Sugar Sean. Yeah, they're trying to just give him the. They're just trying to feed him somebody, which I'm surprised by because he's talking about doing heroin on his podcast. Did you see that? Did you see Megan Anderson? <clears throat> yeah, that was pretty funny. She up. was pissed. Yeah, that's she should have been. I, I don't like. I, it's not understand. Like, you can't just go on a podcast as like UFC fighters and be like, yeah, I'd fuck this UFC girl. Like, yeah. You, like, you can, <laughs> but you, like, you look like shit. Like, you look. You if look I like said a... that, I'd feel bad saying I'd fuck a, a random girl. From the UFC, and I don't work at the UFC. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. Like you would feel shitty man, saying it. That guy's a grown man. Just like, eh. especially the way he said it too. He's like, uh, she's like, uh, what do you call her? Like a, like a three Four o'clock in the, five morning. In the morning. Yeah, yeah. like Jesus. And you like Christ. him, right? You like Casey Henry, right? I mean, I, I like like his his fighting. Like, yeah, like I think he can be like a 
a contender in the division, but like, it's one thing to say like behind closed doors, you can't go on a fucking podcast and say that like, or say, hey dude, I'm not talking that about that. Like push back a little bit. Like this isn't high school, yeah. right? You know, it's not locker talk room like talk. That. Yeah, and like, and dude, the clip I sent you guys too. I said like watch around nine minutes. You guys didn't watch it. I, I, I didn't. didn't I didn't end up watching it. So the, <clears throat> the, the what the the context was they were talking about the fights this week with um, Jack Hart Close. Who just knocked? He just got knocked out by Benil Darius in that comeback fight. So Jack Hart Close was on the podcast, and uh, you know fucking Sean O'Malley's redhead ginger coach guy, Tim Welch. Yeah, who was on the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, I was, I was literally just watching that season. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, he said some. They were talking about the fights and they're getting into the matchups, and they're like, "Oh, Pantoja." Uh, Pantoja. He goes, "You ever win against him?" And he goes, "Oh yeah, I did knock him out in, in training." He goes, "I was like three and zero, and Pantoja was." To start the UFC, and he goes, "Hey, I knocked him out." Like, dude, who the fuck mentions that? Yeah. Like, like, first of all, you're a 135 pound guy. Yeah. And Pantoja is a 125 pound pounder, and dude, your coach is bringing up you knocking out a, a guy in training, right? As a winner, he goes, he said you had a win over him. Yeah, that's that's not, fucked up, dude. Yeah, and that's like, fucking yeah. ridiculous. And like that makes me think it's like they're both shitheads. Yeah. It's what like I really loved Sean O'Malley, and it's like now I really just don't care. Yeah. Like I was him knocked out. I think he's like turning heel or whatever. Like, right. It yeah. Like he's leaning into his, his shitheadness. Yeah, I would much I I have zero care for Sean O'Malley now and I was on that hype train. Yeah. Right? I was a big fan. But now it's like, dude, you I think you're a piece of shit. Yeah, like <laughs> there must be a thing about it. there must be just not jack <laughs> shit to do in fucking Montana except be a shithead. Yeah. It, but like it's on a podcast it just looks in bad form and you look like you train like it's one thing for a fighter to say that and, and wear that badge of like, oh, I knocked him out in training and actually think that about themselves because you do what you need to do to build up confidence. If you're coming to the UFC for 3 0 and you didn't TKO Pantoja, and it, well, he said also too, yeah, coach was like, pull back your shots a little bit. So he was like bragging that he wasn't pulling his shots. Yeah. But like, that's bad etiquette. You train. If you knock out somebody in training, if you tap somebody in training, that's not a win. No. Because, like, you don't know how our Pantoja was going in comparison right. to Sean O'Malley. Right. You don't know Pantoja was pulling his punches and just had a disconnect there. And as far as I know, in training, you're not supposed to be trying I to I was knock literally just getting ready to say, I you're would bad feel so bad. Yeah, you're a bad like, training partner. I'd yeah. instantly fall to the ground and be like, oh, my God, are you okay? Yeah. I'm so sorry. And, and also, your coach, that's your coach's mentality to training? Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. You know, it, it looks like you're training with, like, assholes and you're – that the etiquette and culture that in your gym is like, why the fuck would you want to go train with Sean O'Malley and his coach? Right. Like, you're not going to do doubt and bragging about it on a podcast. Yeah. And they, and he left the lab. He left Did MMA he? lab. I don't think he's there anymore. I, I, I could be wrong, but I don't, I haven't like really seen anything about him being there. And it's just like, dude, do you have a baby? You're talking about doing, trying heroin. Yeah. You're talking about fucking girls. Yeah. Like, and like your coach, his coach seems like an enabler. Yeah. Like he's like a yes man stooge. Yeah. It'd be one thing to be like, oh yeah, I try ecstasy. Like, okay, whatever. But I try heroin. Like, yeah. And if, heroin? You gonna, you, you gonna shoot it or you gonna snort it? Like, what route are we gonna go, bud? Because if you shoot it, you're gonna get addicted. Yeah. I mean, it, you'll get addicted if you snort it. Well, we're, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but. It's just like, as a pro athlete, just like, and, and any 15 year old kid listening to your podcast that thinks you're cool. Yeah. And you're talking yeah. about doing heroin. And I'm not like a prude. I'm not like, oh, don't do drugs, don't whatever. You know, I'm right. pretty, pretty okay with like whatever you, life you lead. But it, it just like paints a bad picture of like who he is as a person. Right. Yeah. And it's hard to root for somebody who's like so, I don't know. Especially when you're not UFC champion too. It'd be worse if you're UFC, UFC champion, but like, have a yes man coach and leaving a gym maybe and doing all the shit and then you fucking. Can't make it through a fight without your legs collapsing, right? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yeah, like, it's just like, like you think about the good fighters and like a Henry Hooft. Would a Henry Hooft be on his podcast talking about Gilbert Burns, fucking fucking some UFC fighter? Yeah, like, right. You, know, you think about the good camps, the good coaches, and like there's just that level of respect there. Or like Eugene Behrman from City Kickboxing, Mike would Brown. Be, and yeah, him. would he be? Would Mike Brown be on there talking about? Oh, dude. Yeah, it'd be cool, Poirier, if you tried heroin. Like, you know, like, right. like, like what the fuck? Yeah. Like, you look, look like clowns. Like, you know? you'd say, like, hey, no, don't, don't do that. Not only that. Don't think that. Don't ever. Th- don't let even. Don't think it. Yeah. He doesn't seem like a coach. He seems like your fucking stooge lackey. Well, right. that's but that's pretty much what it is. I mean, they they both. I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, they're both from the same town in Montana. Like, they're both from Montana. And they're both. 
And like I feel like Welch is your like his MMA career fizzled out, and now he's on like the the, the Sugar Sean O'Malley brand. Right. Like, Train with Sugar Sean O'Malley, but like I don't know, I, I don't see a lot of longevity. Not even phys- like physically, Sean O'Malley has talent, and like he's skilled, but his body looks not durable, and his mindset looks dumb as fuck. Dumb <laughs> as fuck. Like, dumb as fuck. And, like I, I don't assume every UFC fighter I see is some big brain. There's a certain level of you know you you could be stupid and be successful. Yeah. Look at Tito Ortiz. He was dumb as fuck and has a pea brain and was a champion. Whatever. Now he's a politician. Right. <laughs> now, now he's a successful politician. <laughs> that is, well but then you see about like compare like I don't know if you ever heard the interviews but like compare someone like Corey Sanhagen his mentality towards the fight game yeah against Sugar Sean O'Malley yeah. I'm so Corey, laughing at Tito Corey, Ortiz yeah. the fucking worst <laughs> <laughs> when he, he called him an, I when he yeah. said a for of Elio, he's like, No, I'm a Gemini. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or a Pisces or whatever the fuck he said. Did, did you have you seen his like compilation of like <laughs> his cringiest moments? <laughs> oh, I'm, I've seen plenty of videos yeah, about it, him. I yeah. remember that, that uh press conference with Chael. He's telling the story about like some wolf or like some animal <laughs> and like dude in the middle of the talk, yeah, Chael starts snoring. <laughs> and like Chael I love Chael. was yeah. the best shit talker and it wasn't in and, and like he never cussed like that was the one thing about Chael was like he never had to like really cuss he just was like boom it didn't seem forced either or no. forced in a way that like it was like a wink and a nod yeah it's like, just like it, it rolls right it off his tongue watching wrestling yeah you do yeah. Like a bad guy like, yeah like and like you it's like him, go back to Sugar Shime Alley him being how he is that's just who he is. Yeah. He just is like a shitty little kid that is a good yeah. decent fighter. Yeah. And Chael was a marketer. Yeah. And like it's different marketing, but it's just, I don't know. He it's, was a marketer and he actually, he wasn't a great fighter because he was so one dimensional. Like he was yeah. a really good wrestler, but his striking was atrocious. And it's like his jutsu wasn't angry either. No, it's just wrestling. He, and like, he like did like baby punches on top. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I don't know if he even beat someone's ass really. Even. Yeah. Uh. And he fought for the middleweight title twice and the light heavyweight title once. Like man, hell of a marketing plan. And you look at the people he lost to. Like he's like he fought Fedor. He fought John Jones. He fought Anderson you know, Silva. Like that's yeah. three of the goats. Yeah. Yeah. You know, three of the goats in the respective divisions. So it's like he just he fought a lot of fucking good people. Like fought yeah. Leader Machida. You know, like fought Rampage Jackson. Like it just. He fought like everybody from his era. Yeah. yeah. Well, and he won all the fights he was supposed to win. You know what I mean? Like he only lost to like the top of the top. Yeah. And, and he was beating Silva. Yeah. That was, yeah. Well, he would have got suspended and stripped for his like TE levels. Yeah. yeah. They were like fucking his hormones were like off balance, but still, he was winning that fight. But like also, Inner Silva fucking got suspended for steroids. I'm not saying yeah. he's always juiced. I right. Don't th- I don't think that, but you got this thing like, well, they both got failed tests, you know, yeah. and, and like it is what it is. My thing with that with that fight though is when you watch the documentary that they made leading up to that fight, yeah. he's like he's Anderson Silva said the only way I will win this fight is by submission. So when you look at that, it's like, ah, uh, well, was that part of the game? I don't think losing up until the last minute was the game plan, right. but I think being on his back. Was yeah. the game plan because he was he's I'm gonna submit him because he yeah. kept talking shit about Nag Jiu Jitsu. Well, yeah, but like in Silva, I mean, I, I was it's like you that's a bad game plan. I just feel like it's a bad game plan. It's a bad game plan. It's just, you know, like me saying as a fucking non fighter that the goat or whatever is a bad game plan, but yeah, it just it's like you know, that wasn't your wheelhouse until you did it, you know what I mean? Yeah, like he wasn't known for like just submitting people off his back. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I mean, he had quite a few submission wins too. Did, yeah. I mean, Dan Henderson, Dan Henderson. Him, choked him out. Yeah, uh, was it Travis Sluter? He submitted mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, also Chael too had was very prone to being submitted as yeah. well. I think he had submission losses. On yeah, his and then the well again because the next Silva versus Sonnen fight, he just beat the shit out of him. Yeah, Sonnen looked like he was like mentally, yeah, not ready to be on that stage again yeah from that fight seeing how, how it played out he looked frantic to get the fight to where it was in the first fight yeah and like he just you know he forced the wrestling too much in that fight cause I remember like I think he was like having not great success on the feet but Sonnen was like touching him up with his foot for the takedown yeah the first fight he was like he, I think he like almost dropped so with a 
punch because he's so worried about getting taken down. But yeah, it's been so long ago, I can't remember now. But it seems so archaic and so old that this fight this is yeah. like a different fucking time period. But right? Do you think MMA has gotten better? Like, yeah. Just, yeah. Oh yeah. Like, like, like it's, I always yeah. try to. I always think like, is it me? Just no. It's evolved. You know, as someone who came in relatively like late to the game going back and watching old fights like you had made a statement about the frankie edgar gray maynard trilogies so fucking old. like the the level of competition and the way like dudes they don't fight like that anymore like it's so blocky and, yeah. and like how, how the fuck frankie edgar did not go to sleep eight times in that first fight is beyond and me like, just, like every one of them he was knocked out in every one of them. i know imagine like prime gray maynard versus like dustin poirier he would get battered. Yeah. Like, like his takedowns weren't as good. Yeah. Being, right. Being, like, his hands weren't good. Well, and that's, mm-hmm. I, to me, like, when I watch, when I think about the past and, I, and then I'll look at today, like, my biggest thing is, like, you could be a dominant champion being just great at one thing and ignore the rest. You yeah. can't do that anymore. No. You, you just can't. You can't be just a, a, a amazing striker and then not have any wrestling. Yeah. Well, and it's like now Khabib's too, the only one that can do it. Yeah. Even though his striking is like it keeps getting improving. Better. And like and like I feel like there was a big disconnect between like you look at John Fitch's striking and like how it was bad, but it wasn't even bad in a way that you could look at it in a vacuum. It was bad even in comparison to like setting it up for a striking game. Yeah. He like Khabib's striking is good. For his wrestling game and his style, right? So he he like sort of tailored it and sharpened it towards a certain way to fight. John Fitch just had bad striking, right? Like it just like it wasn't serviceable. It didn't get him better takedowns. Yeah, it just was bad. And there's a big disconnect. And he he was good at wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Ben Askren. What were you gonna say? The thing what? too now is like when you're when back in the day when guys were coming in, they were either you know wrestlers in college or they were. Uh, amateur boxers like now you don't go in and just train one thing you train mma like yeah. like people like that you just go and you learn everything in a gym and it's not you don't have to jump around and go to this jiu-jitsu gym and go to this boxing gym and go to this wrestling gym it's, all right there. it's just all yeah, else, yeah. and it's like that's a big advantage honestly i mean if you have a background like if you're in high school wrestler or something like obviously that's like good for you but if you're someone that has never trained anything for like me like we'll just use me as an example yeah we the way devin does it is like one day like all striking the next day we'll hit we'll do mitts or something and then it's all jujitsu all wrestling like we it, it's just i don't know i think it's just better than i don't know i, I just like, think it's better to train it as a whole than being right. just one thing like you were saying yeah. i guess like like take someone like Corey sanhagen where'd he come in as I don't even know if he was even a fucking athlete. Uh, yeah. Like, like he's, he came like in as an MMA kid. fighter is what yeah. it looks like. Right. Yeah. 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 It looks like some skinny kid who just started training MMA that, you know, was decently athletic, pretty athletic. And, like, some people are unathletic. They don't know they're unathletic. I don't know if he played sports, but he seemed like he looks like a fucking soccer player or something like that. Like, he yeah. has his physique. And, like, he he's good at everywhere. He's pretty good everywhere. And, like, you know, I guess the first example I can remember as, like, Rory McDonald. And also, uh, fucking, there was a guy who... Uh, who's a welterweight as well, who he fought Roy McDonald early. They both were like young kids fighting, like 16. They fought back in the day. Yeah. But they came in together. Uh, oh, Jordan Mean. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who who sort of washed out. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So I haven't heard they, that name they, in a while. They fought when they were like 16 years old at like MMA. So like they fought each other. And like I remember that being like a narrative, like new breed of like fighters coming up or like Roy McDonald. <coughs> and yeah. now it's like they're all Roy McDonald's unless like a, we're a wrestler or whatever. Right. Like, right. Like said. But I feel like there's certain dispositions that you have. Like if you're a wrestler, there's certain things that you were trained to do, like cut weight, you know, and that the grind of wrestling sets you up for a work ethic that you don't have if you're like a boxer or like the physicalness of your body. Like you're, you know, to learn striking as a you know, and learn grappling as a striker seems harder to me. Yeah. Like if you're a kickboxer, you think about how many people wash out and just like as a kickboxer that are bad. Yeah. Like how many successful kickboxers are there? Probably a fucking. Is he? Yeah. Like he, he seems like he's Cyril like, Gain. Yeah, Cyril Gain's a great kickboxer and learned, you know, but there's only a few, a handful. Yeah. That made that jump. Yeah. Do you know who um Rico Verhoeven is? He's yeah. that kick number one. That man is huge. I've he's never a, like that's a big ass you know, motherfucker. No. Oh, he's, he's a big. He's look a him up. Kickboxing champion. What's his name? Yeah, Rico, Rico Verhoeven. Show him. Get that candy out of their fucking. Oh my screen. god, I Get fucking hate you. Because we all know that. Rico. Verhoeven, V. Just, 
No, uh, V E R. Yeah, type V E R. There he is. I think he's like Dutch. Yeah, this is another thing about dudes from fucking. He looks like the Netherlands. He looks like a Klitschko. Fucking tank yeah, dude. dude. Look at him. <laughs> like what? Like he would have been good at any. Sport. Like that one right there. Yeah, he'd have been good at any sport. Like football doesn't matter. And he's tall as shit it's too. Like, some people have the genetic lottery. Yeah. I. I feel like there's a certain style of body that is best for MMA. He's it's, huge. I feel like the Anderson Silva, Corey Sandhagen body, skinny, yeah, athletic, mm-hmm. fast twitch muscles that are like, but like. Good cardio. I feel like that's more of the basis. Uh, well, yeah, because the bigger, like your, the the more bulging your muscles are, the harder it is for blood to circulate through them. So it affects the, like the, for lack of a better term, like the cardio of your arms. Your yeah. arms will get tired faster. You Dead see, arms you, suck. You see less like Chad Mendes is and stuff. You see less people that are like built. And, like, yeah. Tense. Short and stocky. Yeah, like the, people. There are successful UFC fighters now like that. I feel like a uh, Volkanovski sort of like that. But like I feel like Vol- Volkanovski though has gotten his body in such good shape that he. He doesn't rely on that body for like he's, yeah. He he's, fights long. He fights good, mm-hmm. great cardio. So like he doesn't even like that really. And he yeah. used to have weight on him. He was a fucking rugby yeah, player. He weighed like a like that. Yeah, yeah. He was well, like fucking two hundred pounds. Two hundred, yeah. <laughs> like, so I feel like he's just naturally strong and has good cardio from his athletics. But you see less like Sean Shirks. Yeah, you know, they don't right. see something like that and have success. They've sort of phased out. Like now it's like Max Holloway's. If you can't fucking do everything and like your cardio is bad. There's lower weight divisions. You're gonna be eaten up. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's why I feel like I don't know why he beats cardio so bad. When he beats fights, he gasses out in two rounds. I know. Body wise, he looks to me looks like somebody he, who had great cardio. Yeah. And I don't know why he doesn't have good cardio, but it's, mm. it's bizarre to me. But. Cardio is the most annoying thing in the world. <laughs> it is like I don't know how I was running. I was running six miles in fifty minutes. Yeah. Like I was oh. trucking, and now I'm struggling to get a mile under seven thirty. Like, I'm struggling. But your lifestyle has changed a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I control. <laughs> right. I can give you a few tips. <laughs> I mean, I was still, I was still, I just wasn't drinking as heavily. Like, yeah. I wasn't going out every weekend like I am right now. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> it makes a big difference. This is yeah. like a roast. <laughs> and it's different when you have three days off and yeah. not just two. Because <laughs> that extra day, probably drinking. <laughs> but I feel like there's a limit, though, of like where things, you know, like there's a ceiling for cardio. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't think Connor would ever be good at, at cardio. Yeah. Like he would never be a cardio monster. Yeah. And there's certain fighters that won't be like that. I yeah. feel like there's a certain genetic disposition to being good at cardio and maximizing your cardio that you could be good at and just not yeah. i feel like if you don't start it like relatively early in your life trying to maintain a good you like it's just something that's hard to get when you get older yeah Cause, i mean i used to run all the time when i was in high school i loved to run and then i got older and i was like fuck i hate this i'm gonna do it but i hate it i don't like cardio like I, I i'd rather do something cardio intensive i don't like yeah i'm I hate running on tri- treadmills like, yeah I hate it. oh i love it's it awful. it sucks it's yeah. boring. I watch the clock. I'm like, oh my god, I've only been running for six minutes. Or whatever. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I started putting a fight on and setting my phone on the thing and like watching a fight when I run because I can't. I can run outside, but when you're running outside, you have more of like a want to just stop running and like take a break. When I'm on a treadmill, it's like, oh shit, I got to push the button to come down, and it's like, oh, well, that's just one less thing that I got to do. So it's I'm probably not going to do it. Heard each well, IIT is pretty. Hit workouts, yeah. yeah. Pretty common of like fast. You don't need to like. It's not as like stationary. Or whatever. Stair climber too. That's that that's rough. That's, yeah, fuck that. I hate that thing. Oh, I do too, but I love it at the same time. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up though. <laughs> it's right. um, it's damn near two o'clock. I know. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so we'll be back next week after the pay per view. Um, that we're not too excited to buy, but you know we're gonna watch it, break it down. Uh, cause I am excited for the headline. Yeah. yeah. The title fights are always pretty, pretty yeah. important. Yeah. They're big, it's a big title. Yeah. So, but all right, we're MMA fools. We're out of here. All right. Peace.